Welcome to Lesson 3 in Math 135. We've talked about the basics of uh, graphing and we've talked about the basics of functions. And now we want to look at something else that you probably remember from high school, and that's linear equations. Okay? If you've got your handout from Blackboard, you can follow along with what I'm doing here. <laughs> Wouldn't you love to be James Bond for the day? You can actually rent an Aston Martin. Now, it's not a cheap thing, but you can rent an Aston Martin. Checked it online. One option is $1,000 a day, and another option is $1,400 a day. And I figured, you know, for the difference in price, I bet there's some hidden costs. So I just assumed that on this one deal, eh, we're going to have to pay $250 a mile as well. And if I'm going to spend that kind of money, and I'm going to be in that kind of car, yeah, I'm going to put the miles on it. That is a pretty hunk of metal. Now, what I'd like to do here is make a graph to show the, the two deals going on here. Now, we also want to write an equation. But to start out with here, let's think about our costs. Um, along our horizontal axis, we're going to be putting miles and the reason that would have to be my input variable is the cost is going to be dependent upon how many miles. Now, you might be thinking, well, how many days? Oh, honey, I can only afford one day. So we're only going to have this Aston Martin for one day. But we might put plenty of miles on. So we'll have miles along our horizontal axis, and then our vertical axis will be the total cost. And then, of course, whenever you start to graph, it kind of helps to think about how you want to increment your graph. Because, you know, it doesn't have to be across by ones and up by ones. For example, hmm, I bet there's only 20 or 30 spaces out there, so I don't think going by ones on my miles is a good idea. How about if we go by, let's say, a unit of 10? So every one of my horizontal increments will be another 10 miles. So there will be 10, 20, 30, 40, here's 50, and so on. And the cost, well, it's going to get up there. In fact, it's starting at 1,000. So how about if we take our cost by 100? So each vertical increment will be a step of $100 in our cost. Now remember from our last lesson that a function, and this is essentially a function, I put in how many miles, I get out cost. Um, my function can be represented as a graph, and so if I drive zero miles on, on this first deal, how much is it going to cost me? Well, it's going to cost me $1,000. So. Right there is my starting point, a thousand bucks for no miles. Well, let's hop out, say, to a hundred miles. I don't have a calculator handy, so I need to make the arithmetic easy for myself. So, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Here's a hundred. And if I drive a hundred miles, how much is that mileage fee going to be? Isn't that like um, 250? So I would have the thousand dollars plus another two fifty. That'll be twelve fifty. Well, let's see if I'm going by hundreds. I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifty. <laughs> now, should I connect the dots? We well, you know that's actually kind of an interesting question here. In that, can they charge me for a part of a mile? Well, I don't know for sure. We'll go ahead and connect the dots with the slight idea that maybe they will only charge me for full miles. <laughs> My line may not be straight, but that's okay. It still is a representation. Now, could I write the equation for that particular relationship? It would be a good idea to either use C for cost or use Y as our answer coming out of the function. I like using cost. And my cost is going to be, what, $1,000 plus 
250 for every mile. Now how can I represent 250 for every mile? If my x represents my miles, it'd be 2.50 times x, right? So by the way, I have two of my three representations for functions here. I'm showing an equation for it, and I'm showing a graph for it. Now, let's look at deal two, and you might have forgotten what deal two was. Wow, that car's pretty. Deal two is just a flat $1,400 a day. Huh, I was so afraid that might happen. And so let's put in deal two. I'll put this back real fast. You know, this kind of looks like that one function we had in the last lesson where the answer was always five. In this case, you know, it doesn't matter how many miles I drive, the answer for my cost for this one day is always $1,400. So that's really pretty easy. Okay, let me quickly get my graph back for the included. And if I'm going to graph this guy, it actually sometimes throws students, but it's way easier than you think. If I'm going to make a table of values, because remember from our graphic, uh, graphing basics, if you're unsure how to get a graph, make a table of values. If I drive zero miles under deal two, how much do I pay? $1,400. If I drive 100 miles under deal two, how much do I pay? I still pay $1,400. If I drive 1,000 miles, it still is $1,400. OK, so essentially, I just need to find out where 1,400 is. And it's always the same. So you know, we could kind of explore our two functions and find out, well, how many miles until a deal two is better. We'll hold off and look at that later, unless you're just really dying to figure out which deal you should take. What we're really focusing on today is graphing lines and also writing equations of lines. And so I've got one here on the graph, and I'm showing you two points. And if you remember anything from high school geometry, two points will uniquely determine a line. So I'm saying your line is going through the point 0, negative 3, and through the point 1, 2. Now there's only one such line. And we want to write the equation for that line. You might remember this guy. Y equals mx plus b. Oh, we all love it. What do you call that guy? Slope intercept form of the line. And what's the m in the equation? That's your slope, right? Y equals mx plus b. This guy is always going to be your slope, and the b is, well, you might remember it as y-intercept, or some people call that your vertical intercept. So then you look at your line and say, well, do I know either of those pieces of information? Well, you know I can find my slope. Slope is rise over run, and if I'm looking at the graph, I can say I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up, and one over. So we have a slope of five. What about a vertical intercept? Well, we're crossing the y-axis at negative three. So that would be my equation. And of what value is my equation? Well, remember, while I was only given two points, that line contains infinitely many. And this equation will allow me to see the relationship between those infinitely many. OK? Well, let's take a new line. And in this case, I still have two points. Um, I've got the point negative 5, 4, 
He's way out here in the second quadrant, and I've got the point 3 comma 2 in the first quadrant. And I can count the slope, right? That won't be any big deal. But what about a y-intercept? And you know, I have some people that love slope-intercept form of a linear equation so much that they decide to guess it. Don't do that. Okay, as it turns out, there's another option here. And I really like this option. This guy is called point slope form. Now you may or may not have run into this in high school. Some high school algebra classes do hit it, some don't. I know everybody loves this guy. All right, that one's your slope intercept. This guy is point slope. Now you see, here's what's beautiful about your point slope form. It's when you know a point and you know the slope and you simply plug those two in and then simplify your equation and you're done. Makes it very, very convenient. Well, let's count our slope. Let's see. From C, I would go down two. I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to the right. So my slope is down two, eight to the right. I could simplify that to negative one fourth. Hey, I love putting pieces together so that I see the big picture. Does negative one-fourth make sense for a slope for that? It should be a downhill and it shouldn't be a steep downhill. So yeah, I'm okay with that. Now, which point should I use? I can either use the negative five-four or I can use the three-two, whichever one I wish. They both will work for me. I have a tendency to avoid the negatives because I make more mistakes there. So I would use the point 3, 2. Now what I do is I enter this information, the negative 1 fourth, and I put this point into this particular equation. So I have y minus 2 is going to equal my slope times x minus 3. Now, in some cases, you can leave your equation right there because that does qualify as an equation for that line. But sometimes you want to clean it up just a little bit. So I can distribute my 1 fourth through there, and we love to distribute. So that gives me negative 1 fourth x and a plus 3 fourths. Then the only thing left to do, and you can see how nice and easy this is, I just add that 2 over, ah, granted I've got some ugly numbers, but I can live with that, y is equal to negative 1 fourth x plus 2 and 3 fourths. And again, check and see, does 2 and 3 fourths make any sense to be sitting right here? That would be your vertical intercept, boom. 2 and 3 fourths. Looks good. Okay. Well, now what we want to do is make a little bit of a switch on this, and I give you the equation, now you graph it. We need to be able to go both ways. So we have y equals negative 3x plus 4. Now, in our very first lesson, we talked about how you can make a table of values. When we talked about the Aston Martin, we essentially made a table of values. But you know, if you look at this particular equation, because you see, you're going to get tired of making tables of values. And sometimes they're just not real reliable for you to get a nice graph. So it helps if you get an understanding of your algebraic equations so that you can look at that equation and say, you know what? That guy is a linear equation. Okay, so I see that negative 3x plus 4. And I say, you know, he looks a lot like that equation right there. And if that's the case, which it is, then I've got a vertical intercept 
of 4. So I can go to the graph and I say, look, I know that I cross the y-axis 1, 2, 3, 4 at positive 4. Okay? Now, one point alone is not enough to graph that line. I need one other point, at least. So then I go and I look at the other very important feature here. The other important feature is that my slope is negative 3. Now, you recall that slope is rise over run. And you might say, well, look, with negative 3, where's your fraction? You know what I can do. You know I can write that as a negative 3 over 1 for my slope. And so I will have from this point go down 3. Why is it down? The negative indicates that. And to the right 1. Now I can continue doing that if you want some more points or you can just say, all right, that'll at least give me a pretty decent idea of where my line should be falling. So it's real quick and easy to graph your line if you've got it in slope intercept form. You put your vertical intercept and from your vertical intercept you run your slope. Yeah? All right. Well, What if you've got 4x plus 3y equals 9? Let me get that up here. 4x plus 3y equals 9. And you say, you know, that guy is not in slope-intercept form. You're right. Which means I can't just start pulling numbers. This is what we call general form or standard form, depending on the author. And I actually like to use that guy to graph sometimes because what I do in this case is kind of make a table of values, but what I do is I find my intercepts. And I'll show you just how quick and easy it is. X-intercept, Y-intercept. I mentioned before that these two guys are pretty important because they're kind of on the anchors. Those axes are the anchors of this whole graphing system. So it helps if I know where I'm crossing those important lines. And the way that you find them is you always put zero in for the other variable. So to find my y-intercept, I put zero in for x. Now watch how nice this is. And I, I hope you can appreciate the quickness of this and efficiency. If x is zero, it totally knocks that term out gone. And so all I'm really looking at is 3y is 9. So y would be 3. Right? So what I know is my y-intercept is 0, 3. Okay, I'll put it on the graph in a moment. Now, to do the same thing, to get my x-intercept, I put 0 in for y. Well, that's going to totally knock that term out. Well, this one's not quite as pretty, but it's not that bad. 4x is equal to 9. So I divide the 4. Eh, not pretty. But the x is going to be 2.25 or 2 and a quarter, however you like to think of that. So my x-intercept is 2 and a fourth comma 0. Hey, and when you're asked to give intercepts, it is a good idea to always give them as an ordered pair just for total clarity that we know which one you're talking about. Well, let's go ahead and graph these guys now. We had 0, 3. We have 2 and a quarter. Eh, just have to estimate that. And then my line is something like this. Now, for those of you that can't work with anything except slope-intercept, when you get into this kind of a situation, what is it that you do? I bet I can guess. You're going to put that guy into slope-intercept. Now, you know what? If you want to do that, it's hunky-dory with me. Wouldn't be what I'd choose. 
You would subtract your 4x over, so 3y is equal to negative 4x plus 9. Divide your 3 off. And then you can come over here and you can say I'm crossing my vertical axis at 3. I've got a slope of negative 4, 3. Works great. And you'll get a lovely graph. So you've got two choices here. I'd love it if you can be flexible. I think this is a nice and quick, efficient way to get a graph. But if you just really don't feel like you can let go of the slope-intercept form, boom, there you go. You can work with that as well. Okay. Well, then I put two together here. X equals 4, Y equals 4. And some of you might have that memorized. But my guess is uh, it's a 50-50 shot as to whether you get it right or not. These are kind of unusual critters, and these are the ones that will cause us grief when you see that. You're like, what the heck? I only have one ladder. What's up with that? Now, of course, if you just saw this sitting on the side of the road somewhere, you might even wonder what you're supposed to do with it. But if you're told, graph the line whose equation is x equals 4, then you know we're talking about it's got to have x and y coordinates. Now here's where I have a tendency again to think of the table. Anytime I run into grief, I go back to the basics. Because you see, what this is telling me is x is 4, x is 4, x is 4, x is 4, all day long, x is 4. And y can be anything you want, and then plot it. Okay, we have what was that? 4, negative 2? 1, 2, 3, 4. We have 4, 0. We have 4, 1. And remember, I can do that all day long, and I'm going to soon see, oh, that's the vertical line. Now, some people just memorize. Oh, x equals the number is a vertical line. Hopefully, your memory never fails you on that. If you fall in love with the slope-intercept and you always want to go from that perspective, do you realize you run into a little bit of grief on this one? This is the only one, but this one is going to give you a lot of grief. Why? Well, for one thing, if I've got this equation and I'm trying to solve it for y, I'm really in a world of hurt. There is no y. I can't solve it. And let's take a look at our graph. What's also extremely interesting is, what's the y-intercept? Well, there is none. What's the slope? Undefined. Vertical lines. Slope is undefined. <laughs> so how would you write, well, y equals undefined times x plus there isn't any. We can't deal with that. And so generally, whenever I see only one variable, I take just a second and I stop and think about it. On this guy, I'm going to say, oh, all of my y coordinates are 4. My x coordinate can be anything I like negative 2, 0, 5. And then within a split second, I can come over and I can say negative 2, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I've got 0, 4. I can have 5, 4. I can do those all day long, and I've got my graph. Okay? So when you see just one of the variables, yeah, those are our special lines. One of them is a horizontal and one of them is a vertical. Um, I've given you some different options for how to deal with them. This guy you can think in terms of the slope intercept. M is zero, that's why that term is missing, and B is four. See that horizontal line, boom, has a slope of zero. <laughs> you know, um, one of the ways that I remember which one that is as to one of these guys being zero and one of these guys being vertical uh, and being undefined is that I can ride my bike on this. 
Okay, I, I think of slope as a measure of steepness and oh gosh, those hills on a bike can be such torture. So I think of those as being positive slope. And then zero slope, I'm okay with that. I can ride that, but undefined, whew, I'm not riding that one. Okay. Well, what I did is I went ahead and just for a second put our three types of linear equations all together for us to just kind of recap for a second. There are three you run into and you should be familiar with the three. General form, sometimes also called standard form, is basically just pretty to look at. All right? We tend to have ax plus by plus c equals zero. Sometimes this c is on the other side. It might be 5x minus 2y is equal to 10. That's in standard form. Sometimes the number's on the left. Sometimes it's uh, on the right. I think it's pretty. I think it's easy to type, and that's one of the reasons why we use it. But for graphing and for writing equations, these other two are much friendlier for us to use. Slope-intercept, I don't think I've ever met an algebra student that didn't remember slope-intercept form. But I have met quite a few over the years that kind of resisted this point-slope form. You don't have to use it, but it is very, very handy. So if you're willing, you might try it, especially if you're going to move on up into higher level math classes. I think the point-slope form will probably serve you better in more difficult situations. Okay. Well now, we're going to continue and take it up just a little bit of a level. I said write the equation of the line that is parallel to this guy, and he has an x-intercept of 4, 0. Wow, that's a lot of information. And I really like looking at pictures. So, I would like to graph that 5x minus 2y plus 6 equals 0. And I would do it by saying 5x minus 2y is equal to negative 6. Remember, if it's in this form, it's really handy to find your intercepts. If x is 0, this makes y equal to 3. So I have 0, 3. If I let my y be equal to 0, that gets covered up. And yeah, the answer's not pretty, but I can deal with it. It's negative 6 fifths. Okay. And all I really want here is a rough sketch, so this is good. And I say, all right, 0, 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 6 fifths, 0, so it's about there, and boom. There's a rough idea what my line looks like. That's good enough. Because this is just helping me organize my thinking. So I want the line that goes parallel to this guy and has an x-intercept of 4, 0. So let's see here. Here's my x-intercept of 4, 0. So actually, can we get a picture of where this would go? I want this line, I mean bow, because that guy is parallel to here. But you know, right now, all I have is one point on the line. That's not enough information to write the equation, so I have to get some other feature. And as you ponder, it's extremely important that he be parallel. And parallel would tell me what feature? Steepness. These two guys, if they're parallel, they have to have the same steepness, so they have to have equal slopes. Oh, so guess what? I've got to put him in slope-intercept form anyhow, don't I? So I would have 5x is equal to 2y minus 6. I like keeping that guy positive. Add the 6 over. 5x plus 6 is equal to 2y. Divide by 2. Y is equal to 5 halves x plus 3. 
and I did have him crossing the y-axis at 3, that's good. His slope right here, that's what I needed, 5 halves. Hey, is that an acceptable answer here? Actually, I think I hit it pretty decently. From here, I went 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up, 2 over. <sighs> Looks good. So that means that the black line there has to have the very same slope. So I want the equation of the line that has the slope of 5 halves and goes through the point for 0. Well, to do that, I don't want to use the standard form. He's not helpful there at all. I'd either use slope intercept, which I think most of you probably would use. I really like this guy. And to try to get you considering him a little bit more, I'm going to use him. You know, he's called point slope for a reason. Because he's really handy when you know the point and you know the slope. So I say y minus the y coordinate of the point that I know is equal to slope times x minus the x coordinate of the point that I know. Well, you know I can ignore that minus zero. So I have y is equal to distribute the 5 halves, 5 halves x minus That's why I love point slope. There's no find the b and then rewrite it all again. All you have to do is simplify. Ah, it went away. Oh, there it is. Hey, what's cool about this is you can now take a look. I'm saying my line is 5 halves x. I have a slope of 5 halves. And I have um, a negative 10 for my vertical intercept. Granted, I didn't draw the prettiest line in the world, but negative 10 is an acceptable answer there. And that's the kind of thing you want to do. Okay. All right. Well, write the equation of the line that goes through negative 3, 2. Okay, we have to go through negative 3, comma 2. And we have to be perpendicular to that line. Well, let's see here. 1 third x minus 4. Well, that's going to be down there a little ways, isn't it? OK. So he's going to be down about here somewhere. It's a little bit low for me, but that's all right. And then from the 4, I would go up 1 and to the right 3. And I go up one and to the right. Why am I moving that way? That's my slope, rise over run. OK, so my line is like here. <laughs> I really could have used just a little bit more space down there, huh? The line that I want is going perpendicular to that. So it's looking like that. Now you know these are extremely rough. but. The idea is that it's just helping me organize my thinking. So I know one point on this line that I'm looking for, because I want the equation of this black line. I need another piece of information. You know these slopes are not going to be equal this time. In fact, do you realize that if they're perpendicular to each other, it makes sense that one of them will be positive and one will be negative, as long as you don't have that going on. And in fact, the rule is negative reciprocals. Do you remember that from before? Negative reciprocal on the slope. So the slope of the line that I have up there is 1 third. The negative reciprocal of that would be negative 3. So we have a 1 third and perpendicular to that would be negative 3 over 1. Okay. So you've got a choice now. You could use your slope intercept, but I'm not going to do that. I like my point slope. I've got a slope of negative 3. 
the point that I know is negative 3, 2. So all I have to do is put all this information in and simplify. Y minus 2 is negative 3 times x hmm, minus negative plus 3. And we'd get y minus 2 equals negative 3x minus 9. So y equals negative 3x minus 7. Now granted my, wow, I was really off, wasn't I? But it does make sense that if I had gotten that guy a little bit better, I was going to have to tip him down further. So we can accept that as a possible answer. Okay. Now, let's recap what's what we've gotten tonight. And I think a lot of this should be reviewed for you and hopefully you're pretty comfortable. Just kind of brush up on things. Linear equations can come in three forms. You've got this standard form and basically, yeah, he's just there to look pretty. Okay? Of course, I mentioned that if you've got him, it's really easy to find your intercepts. So I like him actually when I'm graphing. He also comes in your favorite, probably, y equals mx plus b, which is your slope-intercept form, okay? He's extremely easy to write uh, equations and to graph using the vertical intercept and the slope, okay? The third way is my favorite, and I hope you'll try it, and that is our buddy point slope. Now just to reiterate, what's really nice about this point slope is that as you work with this equation, the x is going to stay in there as the x variable. The y stays in there as the variable. The subscript here simply means grab one point, put the x coordinate there, the y coordinate over here. It's lovely because then all you have to do is simplify. In case you couldn't tell, this is definitely my favorite form. Just enter the information and simplify. Voila. Yeah, I know I suck at that, but... The other thing you need to remember is that there's two slope relationships. Uh, one is that if you've got parallel lines, they're going to have equal slopes. That makes perfect sense. Now the second one is a little bit harder to see, but if you want to explore, make a graph, and really look at why we do the reciprocal, and I think that the change in the sign is a lot easier for you to see quickly, but if you have perpendicular lines, the slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. Okay? And that covers it for linear equations. We'll see you next time.